Kipper's Snowy Day by Mick Inkpen. It was a new morning and it was snowing. Huge cotton wool snowflakes were tumbling past Kipper's window. Yes, said Kipper, jumping out of his basket. Yes, yes. He grabbed his scarf and wound it three times around his head. Yes, yes, yes. Kipper was very positive about snow. Kipper rushed outside. The snow lay deep and smooth and new, like an empty page waiting to be scribbled on. He made a paw print and then another. And then, with a whoop, he went charging round and round, crisscrossing this way and that until the garden was full of his tracks. Kipper stopped to catch his breath, letting the swirling snowflakes melt on his tongue. Then he fell backwards into the snow and lay there panting. When he stood up, he found that he made a perfect Kipper-shaped hole. He tried again. Then he tried a different shape, and another. I bet Tiger hasn't thought of this, he said, and ran off to find his best friend. Kipper found Tiger at the top of Big Hill. He was wrapped up in a fat bundle of silly, woolly clothes. Kipper plopped a friendly snowball on top of his head. Hello, said Tiger. Tiger pointed up at the sky. A watery sun was seeping through the gray clouds. It won't last, he said. It'll all be gone by tomorrow. There's a warm wind coming. Tiger was like that. He knew things. But this was not at all what Kipper wanted to hear. So he started throwing snowballs at his friend. Tiger was very easy to hit because the silly woolly clothes were wrapped so tightly around him that he could hardly move. And his own snowballs stuck like little pom-poms to the silly woolly gloves. Look at my new game, said Kipper, falling backwards into the snow. You get up very carefully, and there you are. And there he was, or at least the shape of him. Tiger stretched out his arms and fell backwards with a soft, woolly crump. But when he tried to get up, he could not. He was too round. He just lay there waving his arms and legs like a beetle on its back. Tiger heaved himself over his tummy, but rolled too far, and found himself on his back again. He tried again. The same thing happened. Snow began to stick in thick lumps to the silly woolly clothes. Crossly, he heaved himself over once more. This time, he rolled over twice, three times, four times. Slowly at first, and then a little faster, and then a lot faster, and then very fast indeed, he rolled down the hill. And as he went, the silly woolly clothes picked up more and more snow, so that by the time he reached the bottom, he had changed from a small dog into a giant snowball. The giant snowball fell to pieces. Kipper charged down the hill. Are you right, Tiger? He panted. Tiger pulled off his silly woolly hat. A big grin spread across his face. Again, he said. So that is what they did all day long, taking turns to wear the silly woolly clothes. And by the time the sun began to dip towards the hill, making their shadows long and skinny, they had rolled enough snow to the bottom to build a giant snow dog. They watched their shadows lengthen and fade. It'll all be gone by tomorrow, said Tiger. There's a warm wind coming. But for once, Tiger was wrong. The warm wind stayed away, and that night, another snowstorm smoothed out all of Kipper's paw prints making the garden like a clean, white, empty page once more. 
and the snow dog stood at the bottom of Big Hill wearing Tiger's silly woolly clothes for almost three whole weeks. The end.